Hello, welcome to GSD's annual Title I Parent and Family Meeting. The Every Student Succeeds Act, or ESSA, is a federal law that requires schools to hold this meeting every year to inform families about Title I requirements, your rights, and GSD's Title I program. My name is Marie Dickinson. I serve as GSD's Title I Coordinator and Family Engagement Coordinator. If you have any questions about GSD's Title I program, please let me know. My contact information is on your screen. What is Title I? Title I is a federal education act that provides money to schools with a high number of low-income families. Title I money supports student learning, family involvement, and professional development for teachers. GSD is a Title I school. This means we receive money from the federal government to help students who need more support. The federal money is also used to increase a family's ability to help their child in school. GSD is a school-wide Title I program because of the high percentage of low-income and at-risk students. This means all GSD students benefit from Title I funding. Every year, GSD creates a school-wide plan using feedback from families and other stakeholders. GSD school-wide Title I program includes several things. Small class sizes, a flexible learning program, positive behavioral interventions and supports, or PBIS, ASL and English, bilingual programs designed for deaf students, and family engagement resources. Title I funding is used for various things, family engagement, such as ASL classes and regional parent meetings, educational materials, professional learning for teachers and staff, and technology. You might be wondering what curriculums GSD uses. Just like schools all over the state, GSD follows Georgia's Standards of Excellence learning standards. GSD also uses evidence-based reading and math programs, as well as programs designed specifically for deaf students. A list of curriculums is on your screen.
Now let's talk about assessments. Most students take Georgia Milestones assessments as required in Georgia. Students with cognitive disabilities take the Georgia Alternative Assessment, or GAA. Kindergartners take the GKIDS test. GSD uses many other assessments as well. Please take a moment to review the list on your screen. Why do we assess students? How do we use assessment results? There are different types of assessments. Milestones and GAA are summative assessments that show how much a student has learned in one year. These tests can be tough for deaf and hard of hearing students if they struggle with reading. Another kind of testing is formative assessment. Formative assessment shows where a student is right now. Formative assessments help teachers, parents, and students see strengths and weaknesses. Formative assessments look at a variety of skills, reading comprehension, vocabulary, math skills, writing skills, etc. Formative assessments help teachers plan instruction and help students understand the areas they need to improve. Some formative assessments are formal, like the STAR reading and math tests. Some are informal, such as teacher-created quizzes, projects, or homework. Students who take a milestone assessment are assigned a proficiency score. There are four levels, beginning learner, developing learner, proficient learner, and distinguished learner. A beginning learner will need a lot of support to master future learning standards because they are not proficient with the current learning standards. A developing learner needs some support because they are partially proficient. A proficient learner satisfies their requirements because they show they have the knowledge and skills required for their grade or content area. A distinguished learner excels. For more information and resources you can use at home with your child, visit the websites in this presentation.
Students who take the Georgia Alternative Assessment are also assigned a proficiency score. There are four levels. Level one students show a limited understanding of required knowledge and skills and will need significant support. A level two student shows partial understanding and will need frequent support. A level three student shows satisfactory understanding and may need support sometimes. Level four students show strong understanding and might need a little support sometimes. For more information and resources you can use at home with your child, visit the websites in this presentation. Test results are, of course, shared with parents and families. They are discussed during IEP meetings. State assessment results are mailed home. Progress reports are sent home in the middle of each quarter and report cards at the end of each quarter. If you ever have questions or concerns about test results, please contact your child's teacher. Don't forget about the parent portal too. Parents can see test results and grades at any time in the parent portal. There are also resources for you. Now let's talk about school improvement. Every year, GSD creates a school improvement plan or SIP. How do we do this? First, we conduct a Comprehensive Needs Assessment, or CNA. We collect feedback from parents, families, teachers, and the community through meetings and surveys. Your input is very important because we want to know what we can do better to support your child. Next, we look at the areas of need determined by the Comprehensive Needs Assessment. Typically, ASL and English bilingual development is a need for GSD students. Another consistent need is improving reading skills. Reading is critical for learning in all areas. To achieve proposed goal number two, teachers will receive training in key programs, teachers and students will use technology to develop skills, and new teachers will have additional support. Please remember, your feedback on these proposed goals is very important and greatly appreciated. You will have the chance to provide feedback on these proposed school improvement plan goals during registration. After feedback is collected, the SIP will be edited as needed and finalized. The final school improvement plan will be published for all to read. As part of the SIP, we develop ways GSD can achieve the goal. 
For proposed goal number one, we will do several things, such as test students at the beginning and end of the year with the ASL Expressive Skills Test, provide professional learning on bilingual teaching methods, assign mentors to new teachers, and offer ASL classes for families. GSD has several different programs to support student achievement. One is the Flexible Learning Program for Reading. All students take a class called Response to Intervention, or RTI, Reading. During this class, students receive direct instruction on their reading level. Students who are already reading on grade level have independent reading time. As part of Reading RTI, students also participate in the Accelerated Reader Program. Another program is RTI Math. Students in grades 1 through 8 take a 30-minute class that focuses on foundational math skills. GSD also recently added two programs designed specifically for deaf students. Foundations for Literacy, which is used in grades pre-K through 5, and fingerspelling our way to reading, used in pre-K through second grades. These programs focus on developing ASL skills in conjunction with English skills. Not all programs are academic. GSD also uses Positive Behavioral Interventions and Supports, or PBIS. PBIS is a program that teaches students appropriate behavior for different environments, the classroom, the bathroom, the cafeteria, etc. Expected behaviors are directly taught, modeled, and rewarded. GSD's PBIS program is focused on the three R's, respect, responsibility, and resiliency. PBIS has three tiers or levels. Tier one is for all students. Students are taught what being respectful, responsible, and resilient means in different environments. For example, being respectful in science class means not chatting with your friends, but chatting in the cafeteria is fine.
PBIS Tier 2 provides extra support for students struggling with appropriate behaviors. Tier 3 is for students with serious or disruptive behavior. A team, which includes parents, teachers, support staff, and administrators, develops a plan to meet the needs of the child. Title I funds also provide services for students experiencing a time of transition. Students experiencing homelessness receive help through the McKinney-Vento Act. If you do not have a permanent home, are living in temporary housing, such as a motel, an unused building, a friend's home, or on the street, please contact GSD's Family Engagement Coordinator or Social Worker. We can help. The McKinney-Vento Act can help with providing supplies, food, school uniforms, and transportation. GSD will work to find resources in the student's home community. Title I also provides services for students from migrant families. These students might need additional support to succeed in school and graduate. The Migrant Education Program can help reduce educational disruption, lessen language barriers, address health problems, and improve post-graduation success. Now for the most important part of GSD's Title I program, you. Parents and families are crucial to student success. Why is family engagement so important? Research shows that when parents and families are involved in a child's education, amazing things happen. Attendance improves. Academic success happens. Children are better able to adapt to change, learn new things, and have better social skills. You are key to your child's future success and happiness. So how does GSD encourage family engagement? Many ways are outlined in the GSD Family Engagement Policy. This policy, which is developed with your input, addresses communication, activities, this Title I meeting, and much more. GSD is part of the State Schools Division, and there is a district-level family engagement policy as well.
Another important element of family engagement is the school family compact. This is a three-way agreement between the school, families, and students that focuses on two to three goals that everyone must work together to accomplish. In the past, goals have focused on ASL vocabulary, reading, and having conversations about school. We are currently working on the compact for this year. You will have the opportunity to provide feedback on the compact during the parent input meeting on registration day and via surveys. Each year, GSD revises the Family Engagement Policy and the Compact, and the District revises the District Level Policy. Your ideas and suggestions are critical to this process. You can share your ideas during the Parent Input Meeting on Registration Day, at Regional Parent Meetings, by survey, or by contacting the Family Engagement Coordinator at any time. The Family Engagement Policy and the Compact will be sent home with students in the fall and you will be asked to sign stating that you agree to work on the compact goals. Title I funds must be used for family engagement. GSD uses the money for such things as ASL learning, parent workshops, interpreters to facilitate communication, and other uses as shown on your screen. Wondering how you can be more involved with your child's education in GSD? There are many ways. Attending IEP meetings, taking ASL classes, communicating regularly with teachers, attending special events like the ASL festival, eating lunch with your child, volunteering, and providing feedback. Interested in volunteering but not sure what you can help with? Check out the list on your screen and think about your own skills. We are happy to help you figure out a way that you can help out at GSD. GSD takes pride in the fact that our teachers and support staff are well qualified to educate your child. Parents have the right to know the qualifications of teachers and paraprofessionals working with their child. Occasionally, a teacher will not have the full qualifications required by Georgia. If your child is taught for four or more weeks by a teacher or parapro who is not fully qualified, you will be informed by letter. Everyone knows good communication is essential. So, how does GSD communicate with you? There are many ways. Phone, text, letter, newsletter, website, Facebook. Check out the list in this presentation for all the ways GSD communicates with you. Good communication goes both ways. 
How can you communicate with GSD? Phone calls, texts, the parent portal, IEP meetings, and more. Please read over the list on your screen. Communicating with your child's school should be easy. Contact information for teachers and staff is on the school website. Please allow up to two days for a response. If you do not hear back from a teacher, please contact the principal. And you can always contact the Family Engagement Coordinator for help as well. Thank you very much for your attention to this annual Title I Parent and Family Meeting presentation. If you have any questions, please reach out to me, Marie Dickinson, by phone, text, video app, or email. I look forward to another great school year working with you.